So do you remember some of those problems that we looked at yesterday that had all these huge fractions in them and required finding common denominators multiple times in the solving and the check? Today we're going to talk about a shortcut or a trick that you can use to clear the fractions out of an equation or the decimals out of an equation before you start doing your solving. So your steps for clearing a fraction are going to be to find the lowest common denominator and then multiply every term. on both sides. by that lowest common denominator. When we go to reduce the fractions that are created by multiplying by that lowest common denominator, the fractions are just going to fall away. Similarly, we can clear decimals out of an equation by again multiplying I think I just crossed my L. There we go. Multiplying every term on both sides of the equation by the smallest power of 10. that will clear the longest decimal. So as usual, just hearing the definition or the directions makes it a little hard to picture. So let's try an example of these and see how it goes. Oh, no, actually, thanks to my notes, looks like there's a couple other things we're going to define first. <laughs> The first thing we're going to look at are the acceptable types of answers. An answer that is just a single number is the type of answer that we've been getting so far. All of the problems that we've worked so far have resulted in our variable on one side and a single number on the other side. We call those unique solutions. So sometimes an equation has a single unique solution, where when you get to the end, the answer is a single number, like x equals 7 or x equals negative 2, or x equals 3 elevenths. Well, sometimes it happens that there is no solution. So what we need to talk about is what does that look like when you're solving it? When all the variable terms drop out, leaving two numbers that are not equal we say that an answer has no solution because there is no number that you can put in place of the x that is going to make 7 equal a negative 3. We write the answers for this oops, no solution using the symbol of a 0 with a slash through it. So some of you have been using that slash just to show the difference between the number 0 and the letter O. We're going to have to move away from that. Um, this symbol has a specific meaning in math, and it means no solution. It does not mean 0. Yeah. The other special case that we can see is an example where we get an infinite number of solutions. In this case, all the variables cancel. but they leave 
two numbers that are equal. So when you get down to the last part of your equation, you end up with something like 2 equals 2. That means that no matter what you put in in place of your variable, you're always going to get an equation that is equal. We write that solution using the symbol that looks like this. It's a letter, a capital letter R with two bars in the front. And that is the, sim the uh, number, I'm sorry, the symbol that we use in place of the numbers that are all real numbers. So any fraction, any decimal, any number with a sign, any whole number put in place of the variable in that equation would end up with an answer where things were equal.